Blender. Okay. All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this rolling cylinder that's projecting a text onto whatever surface it's rolling on or whatever it's rolling by. All right, now let's go ahead and get started. I'm go ahead and downsize this. And I'm using Blender 2.81A. Of course, I believe the process will be virtually identical regardless of which version of Blender you were using. Before you get started, you will need to turn on uh, a certain add-on called uh, Tissue Modifier. I believe that's what it's called. So come up here to Edit, go to Preferences, and then click on Add-ons. And right here, click on Tissue. And you'll see this mess, Mesh Tissue. Go ahead and turn that on by putting a check mark right there and it should auto save but if it doesn't auto save you can always choose save preferences right here alright now first thing we're gonna do we're gonna create a cylinder so go up here to add mesh and then choose cylinder now we need to modify the cylinder before we do anything else to it go ahead and with this cylinder selected, press tab to go into edit mode and then choose the face select icon and then right click on the top face and then shift right click on the bottom face. Now, your version of Blender, you may have left click to select turned on. In my version, I have right click to select, so keep that in mind. All right, with those two faces selected, press delete the DEL button or the X button and then choose faces now press tab to exit edit mode now we want to create our you know our text so what we want to do want to add another mesh a plane and I'm just going to move this on the x-axis over here somewhere. Grab, G for grab, X, and then just pull it over. Now I'm going to scale this down on the y-axis. So press S for scale, Y for the y-axis, and then point 1. And this will be our template that we're using in order to create the text. So once we've done this, we want to go to control, press control A, and then apply the scale. Now, that's probably not 100% necessary, but I've gotten in the habit of anytime I change the shape or size of an object, I apply the scale, and I do that mostly because most of my uh, simulations are physics-based, and you need to do that with physics objects. All right, now... I'm going to go ahead and press 7 to go on the top side view and press 5 to go into orthographic view or two dimensional view and we need to cut out a word into this cut out text into it so there's an easy way to go about this I'm going to go ahead and add some text go to add and then text where you at? here you are and I'm going to grab that text press G for grab and then move it on the X axis by pressing X and then just drag it over here and then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode for the text and then I'm just going to add whatever text I want in this case I'm just going to add the word blender but I'm going to put a space between each letter so it's going to be B space L space E space N space yeah, I'm losing track in my head. D space E space R because I'm old. All right, now press tab to exit edit mode for the text. Now we want to scale this text down so it's over top of this little plane that we created. So press S for scale and then just make it about that size and then grab it 
zoom in so you can see better. Maybe need to scale it a little bit more. And then just kind of center it up. It doesn't have to be perfect by no stretch of the imagination. All right. Now if we kind of rotate and look around, we can see that they're intersecting each other. But let's make it intersect even more. So come over here to the Text Modifiers tab. Click on Geometry. And we need to do this to get the next step to work correctly. And then just extrude the text on, let's extrude it by 0.1. The number's not really important, just as long as it's extruded. Now with the text selected, come up here to Object, and then Convert to Mesh from Metasurf Text. Because basically what we're doing, we're turning that text into a mesh. That way we can, that way it will work with our next step, which is a Boolean modifier. So let's go ahead and select this little plane. Come over here to the Modifiers tab. Add Modifier, and then choose Boolean. Now with this little eyedropper, click it, and then click on the text. Make sure this says Difference and then click apply. Alright, now let's go ahead and click on the text and let's just move it out of the way. So press G for grab and then Y for the Y axis and just move it out of the way. So now we got this little plane here that's got the word blender cut into it just like we need. Alright, now the key is we want to apply this to that to this with the plane or with the plane with the text cut into it selected shift right click or shift left click whatever your select function is on your version of blender that way both of them are selected but make sure you select this one first and then this one so that this one is your active object now we want to use that tissue modifier now over here you should have something called edit right here this should be new because you turned on that tissue modifier click on edit tissue tools and then click tessellate now you want to pretty much leave everything alone but click on merge now once that's clicked click OK now all of a sudden you have another mesh pop up right here now let's grab it on the X axis, grab X, and you can see that it's a cylinder, just like this one, but with holes with the letters cut into it. All right, now let's go ahead and just clean up the scene, because we won't need this no more, don't need this no more, don't need this no more. Click delete. Now select the cylinder with the cutouts in it, press tab. Now let's repair it, turn it back into a cylinder. Come up here to the edge select. And then on the top edge, if we click on one of the edges, we're just selecting one edge. But if we want to select all of them all the way around, press Alt, hold the Alt key down, and then right click to select, or left click to select, whatever your version of Blender is set up to do. And once they're all selected around the edge, press F for fill. And then come around to the bottom side and do the same thing. Hold down the Alt key, press select, right click or left click, depending on what you're set up for. And then press F for fill. And then press Tab to exit edit mode. All right, now we want to make this cylinder, you know, build to. Uh, Roll. So we're going to go ahead and rotate this on the X axis. Rotate X 90. That way, you know, this is up and down, this is right and left. All right. Now let's create a floor for this to roll on. So go up here to add, mesh, and then plane. And we're just going to scale this plane up to something kind of large. It doesn't really matter. 
now since we scaled it up and we're going to be dealing with a physics object because this is something we're going to be using physics to make this roll with the floor selected press control a to bring up this menu and then apply the scale now take this object this cylinder and then just move it grab it on the x-axis G for grab and then x-axis bring it to about here and then grab it on the z-axis and then just lift it up a little bit now select the floor now go in the front side view by pressing 1 and then press R for rotate and then just rotate it to about there that way it's just below the cylinder that way the cylinder can hit it and start rolling now before we go any further we need to to actually turn these objects into physics objects so with the floor selected come over here to the physics tab click it and then click on rigid body now we do not want the floor falling with gravity so let's change it from active to passive and that's all we need to do for the floor now with the cylinder select the cylinder and then click rigid body keep it set to active but change it to from convex hole to cylinder alright that way it will actually roll better it will actually calculate quicker if we have it on cylinder rather than convex hole now with this cylinder selected press shift S to bring up this menu and then choose cursor to select it and we put the cursor right in the center of that object and the reason why we're doing that because now we want to add a lamp add mesh not mesh add uh, where you at light and then just add a point light and then this point light is in the center of this cylinder and make sure we still have this point light selected and then shift right click or shift left click again whichever way your blender version is set up so that both of them are selected but make sure you you select the cylinder or the tessellation object second and then press control P because we want to parent that light to the cylinder that way wherever the cylinder goes the light stays inside of it all right now if we was to put this in render view we could sort of see light shining through this now I'm going to go ahead and go into camera view where am I at here lock camera to view and trying to see what I'm losing track of where I'm at here all right and reason why I'm doing this is that way I can only have I can have it so it's only rendering what's inside this camera it'd be a little bit quicker for me uh, where are you at here see this is a little trick you can click on render region that way everything that's outside this camera is not being rendered and actually renders quicker in the in the viewport display now I'm going to turn off that and then then just kind of center this up a little bit now I want to make this uh, this you know projection coming through here to show up clearer so what we want to do is uh, make this lamp inside of it smaller so that it has a, sh a sharper shadow so we'll come over here to the tessellate object and you can see your point lamp is, a, is inside the tessellation object uh, tree so with the point light selected come over here to the light properties and then change this from size 0.25 down to something smaller let's say 0.05 and you can see it made your text sharper and we could also make it brighter bring it up to 1000 and that's actually kind of bright 
All right, now I'll go ahead and take this out of uh, render view, go into front side view, and I'm just zooming out a little bit. And now if we was to come over here to this button, I, it's, it's the scene properties tab. I never didn't know what that was called. Now if you come over here to the rigid body world, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 120. It should, it will probably work better set to there. Go to cache or cache, and then just click bake. Now it should do this in a couple seconds or less. I mean, it took a quarter of a second for my computer. And if we press play, this cylinder will fall on the floor and then start rolling down the hill. All right, now let's go back to our camera. Go ahead and move your camera somewhere off to the side, over here somewhere. And then just kind of aim at your object. Now take, with your camera selected, Come over here to the Object Constraints tab, add a constraint, and choose Track 2. Now we're going to tell the camera to automatically point at this cylinder. So we're going to right here the tar set the target as the tessellation object. Now it went all wacko here, but don't worry, 9 times out of 10. Well, sometimes you'll have to fiddle with this, you know, going through different combinations of this, trying to find the right one that points the camera at your object. But nine times out of ten, you just put this on uh, Y and then minus Z, and then that's correct. All right, see, now if we was to press play, see the camera automatically follows that object, which is what we want or what I want to do in this particular animation because it just makes it so much simpler. So let's go ahead and move this camera on the, I think it's the x-axis, yeah, so that the camera, or so that this cylinder actually rolls past the camera and the camera tracks it as it's going by. And now if we just choose a single frame and click render and there we go let me uh, change my render properties because I'm rendering on sheep it right now and I think I'm trying to use both uh, trying to use uh, this no I got it set up correctly I wasn't sure if I did or not alright now let's go for a fairly high resolution or quality image but I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the world lights just so it looks better and let's see here set this to 128 passes and click render and then of course you can set this however you want whatever quality you can deal with set up the materials however you want and uh, I'm kind of curious what this looks like if I go ahead and put this on um, uh, turn on motion blur. Where's that at? Yeah, I think that will probably look kind of interesting. Yeah. It kind of makes it look like it's moving faster. But anyway, it also, uh, you, this works perfectly fine in... Uh, EV. Of course, motion blur does not work in EV, so you, it doesn't matter if it's turned on. Now, let me go ahead and render this in EV, see what it looks like. See, it works just fine. So now just render it out however you want, change the materials however you want. Simple enough, right? Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will do my best to try to help you. I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much in this tutorial. So that's it. Later, people.
Have you ever wanted to learn how to do a massive physics simulation in Blender using the Rigid Body Physics Engine? If so, my friends over at Olaf 3D Tutorials has an in-depth and detailed training course that will teach you how to create massive physics simulations. This training course will include Kevin Plank style building destructions using a Rigid Body Sphere as a projectile, a cannon to destroy a tower, or a car to crash through buildings. It will also include a basic Python scripting lesson to create and destroy a basic block style pyramid and to create a domino simulation. If this is something you are interested in, please follow the link in the description of this video and don't forget to use the promo code ROOKIE to get a 10% discount. Thank you for watching this video. Here are four other videos you might like. If you liked this video, please give it a like, share it, or leave a comment. I try to respond to every comment on every video regardless how old the video is. Also, please support your favorite YouTubers by disabling ad blocker. Thanks again. Later.